Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80s Slashers YouTube channel. In this video, I will be discussing the 1981 film, Eyes of a Stranger. Now, um, I will be looking um, at the, the plot of this film, the setting, the kills, any nudity within it. Um, I'll talk about the Blu-ray itself um, before wrapping it up with some final thoughts. Uh, so yeah, so let's just, uh, let's just get right into it. So, yeah, Eyes of a Stranger, like I said, is a 1981 film with kind of an interesting history. This is basically a, like, a thriller slash suspense film in the vein of Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. Um, now, while, while the film was in its early stage of production in May of 1980... Um, Friday the 13th, the original film, was re was released. Um, so the filmmakers um, for this film really liked it. Uh, they liked like the gore and all the kills and the practical effects that they saw in that film and decided that they wanted to add um, those elements to their film. Luckily enough, um, both of these films um, shared the same production company in uh, Georgetown Productions. Um, you know, this is the production company who did the first five Friday the 13th films, and this is the sixth one that, 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 that they did. Um, so yeah, so because of that, they were able to um, get Tom Savini to jump on board um, for their film to add um, some, you know, slasher-type kills. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so, now, by, by doing this, um, Eyes of a Stranger really created kind of a unique hybrid type of film. Kind of like a, like a thriller slasher. Um, and I, I, think, I think they pulled it off pretty well, to be honest. Um, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's pretty interesting. So we'll, we'll, we will get into a little bit more of that later. Um, now another thing, this this film also marks the the feature film debut of a very young Jennifer Jason Lee in a really really great role. Um, like I said, I don't want to get too much into the into the the details and the plot of this film, but basically, she plays a character who is uh, has has a traumatic backstory, which is kind of a one of the main subplots in the film, and, um, her character is, cannot see, cannot speak, and cannot hear, and, yeah, I think for the most part, Jennifer Jason Lee was really, really believable in that type of role, and I think she was 18 or 19 years old, and she looks, she looks younger than that, she looks really young, um, but yeah, she, she did great, um, so yeah, so Eyes of a Stranger, like I said, it's, it's an interesting film with, a pretty interesting history. Um, but, you know, like I said, before we get into any more of the details, um, let's just let's just get into um, talking about the plot. All right, so the plot of Eyes of a Stranger, um, basically, like I said, it, like I said, it's very reminiscent of... Um, rear window if, if you're familiar with that Hitchcock film but basically you know the, the film opens with like a photographer walking around um taking pictures in like uh like a beach beach area and he comes across a you know a body floating under the water which is a really cool shot um and this leads of course to you know we cut to like a couple of newscasters sitting at like a, a news anchor desks um saying how there's a serial killer on the loose um, and then we, you know, we cut to see another of, of the killer, um, hunting and stalking a victim. Uh, and we see that. And then we cut back to one of the, the, the female, the newscaster that was del delivering the news. And, and now we, we find out that she's going to be the, you know, the, the main character in this film. And, you know, she lives in, uh, like a big high rise apartment complex, and um, through, you know, things she's noticing in the parking garage and, and stuff that she's, you know, reporting on, she notices that one of her neighbors in the apartment building um, may actually be uh, the serial killer. 
So, you know, as a, as a news reporter, she starts doing her own, you know, investigative research. And, you know, she starts looking for clues. And, um, yeah, it kind of just leads into, like, um, the, the killer is being pursued and hunted by this female. So it kind of becomes like a cat and mouse game between them. And at some point, he figures out that she is on to him. So he kind of turns the tables on her. Um, and at the same time, her, her, she's living with, um, her younger sister, who I, who I mentioned earlier was Jennifer Jason Lee, um, who is, you know, can't speak, talk, or can't speak, hear, or see, and she has an interesting subplot about, you know, kind of a traumatic experience, and that kind of plays into this, and, um, yeah, so as, like, the mystery unfolds, like, we as the viewer, we, we know what's going on. You know, we know that she's, you know, she has identified the killer. Like, there's no mystery surprise to who the killer is. We see him pretty early on in the film. But the the main character, she doesn't know that it's that it's him. So she's trying to piece it together, and we see from his angle what he's doing. He, can, he just keeps going on killing people. Um, so it's, it, it's kind of cool, and it comes to, like I said, like a cat and mouse, the hunter becomes the hunted, and then the hunted turns back on the hunter. It, it, it kind of goes back and forth, and it's, it's a really interesting blend of suspense and you know it all culminates at the end with a pretty pretty tense dramatic ending which is which is really good um so yeah that that's pretty much pretty much the the plot of the film like i said it's it's nothing original like we like i said we've seen it you know probably first appearance in like rear window but then it, we've seen it in all kinds of movies um before like disturbia with that shia labeouf guy um What's the summer of eighty four, which is a really good, um, you know, more of a modern uh, take on that thing. But so it, it, it's a type of story that we've seen a lot. Um, but they do it really well here. So yeah, so this film is not your typical eighties slasher formula. Um, this is definitely a thriller suspense film, but the kills um, were were delivered in. A very like a, a in a slasher film element, um, and like I said, it, it does an excellent job of blending these two genres to create a pretty unique horror film, in my opinion. Now the um, the, the the biggest thing I found with this film while watching the, while watching it is the tension in this film is is fantastic. Um, there's so many so many scenes. Um, in, in, in things like, just in like, like an apartment, inside of an apartment, um, or like a parking garage, or like, um, in an office, um, it, it's just, it, it, it's a closed, kind of isolated space, um, you know, but then people are trying to, there's like a hunt going on in this small apartment, and like, you know, the, the person being hunted is trying to hide, and the killer... Um, for whatever reason, the way they that this is filmed and it, it just there's a lot of tension in these scenes. It, it it's really uh, yeah they they do a really good job. Um, you know, so it's it's really good. But by adding the the slasher elements mixed in with this tension, um, it's it, it's it's like I said, it's it's a really unique mix. And another another thing that this film has that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, it, it really has a sleazy feel to it as well. Um, it's just some of like, when it, when you get to like the, like the sex and the violence, like with the type of killer, it's, uh, it's, it's really sleazy. So yeah, like tense, slasher, sleazy, um, it's just a, a unique mix of a film. I, I haven't seen too many like this. It's, and it's really well done. Every element is, is really well done and, and blended together. So yeah, so like I said, really interesting film. Um, you know, not the most original plot, but um, it's they 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 take that standard plot formula and they add enough different elements to it to really make it interesting and its own kind of thing. So um, yeah, I really like this for the story and the plot. They they did a really good job. All right, so let's uh, let's move on and talk about the setting. All right, so um, Eyes of a Stranger is set in and around um, 
Miami. It's set there. It's filmed there, um, and it, it really it really captures the um, the feeling of the city. Um, there's a lot of like the outdoor daytime scenes um, have a really bright kind of like a tropical you know beach type feel to them. I and mean, when they're just driving around in the sunlight. Um, it just, it just feels like you're like, like a nice summer, like you're on vacation kind of thing. It has that, that, that setting and tone, which is really nice. It's kind of a nice juxtaposition to what's going to happen at, 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 during the night. Um, so it really captures the feel of the city, which is really good. Now, like I said, the nighttime scenes, this is when it really, it kind of turns over and it, it shows like the, the sleazy side of the city. You know, we see, you know, some of the rundown, um, parts of the city, you know, strip clubs, um, that kind of thing. Um, so it, it, like I said, it, it's a really like day and night difference. It, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. So I really like the, you know, the, um, the overall macro, you know, geographic type setting. Now, but the, the majority of the film takes place indoors of things, like I said, of apartment buildings, like parking garages, offices and stuff like that. And, you know, that may not sound exciting in terms of, you know, of a, like a slashy location. But, like I said, these interior scenes are, are they're really well done. And they, you know, they, for whatever reason, they're really what adds to the tension of this film. Just the way they're set up, the shots are set up, and just the, the director just really knew how to um, use these small enclosed spaces to just really grab the, grab the tension and just make it you know, really, really good. Um, so, like I said, like, most of the, most of the scenes, um, inside are, like, these stalking, you know, hunting type scenes, cat and mouse games, um, and it just, I don't know, it, it's kind of hard to explain, it just really has a way of upping the tension levels. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I really like that. So, like I said, even though there's no, you know, unique, cool location, like, you know, most 80s slashers have at, like, a, you know, a shopping mall or a sleepaway camp, stuff like that. It's just kind of a plain indoor apartment buildings in Miami type setting. Um, it, it just, I don't know, it just, it really made the film a little more cla claustrophobic um, and just created a... A really great atmosphere that's that at times is just dripping in tension so um, yeah uh, you know nothing like I said this the setting nothing to write home about nothing exciting nothing anyone's gonna talk about but um the way the film was crafted and set up it they, they, they did a really good job so yeah so um, I guess there's not too much to talk about for that so let's uh, move on and talk about the kills All right, so uh, Eyes of a Stranger has basically four on-screen kills. You know, other people, other people get killed, um, but they're not really necessarily like the kills that we're looking for. So there's basically four on-screen kills using like practical effects and whatnot. Um, so obviously the body count is is a little low compared to you know compared to like the thirteen to fifteen kills we get in some of the Friday films. Um, even though, like I said, even though the the body count is lower, uh, some of these on-screen kills that we do get are really great, um, and you, you can just tell. Like if you're if if you're a fan of this genre, you can just tell that these kills are Tom Savini crafted kills. They just have that the quality and the feel um, to them that that he's kind of known for. That, that like you expect from him. So that that's fantastic. You know, like I said, we only get four of them, but they're really good. Um, so the things we get, we get like, um, again, some, maybe some minor spoilers here, um, but we get a couple of, uh, a couple of really good, like, throat slashings and stabbings, um, you know, he, he's done better, Savini's done better with, with the throat slashings, obviously, like, you know, Friday 1 and, uh, The Prowler come to mind, it's not at that quality, but they're pretty good, you know, this was before The Prowler, so, um, yeah, so some 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 good um, throat slashings. There's a really realistic gunshot wound used, which you know, having a gunshot in a slasher film is is kind of odd. I, I have to say, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of guns in slasher films. You know, I I want the bladed weapons. 
Um, but regardless, the, 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 the wound, it, you know, it, he did a really good job. It, it looks like someone got shot. Really good. The blood pouring out. Um, yeah. R really good for that. But the highlight in this film, without a doubt, there was an incredible decapitation scene that Savini just knocked out of the park. Um, yeah, it's like I said, I don't want to get in too much, but there, there's, there's a whole bunch of different elements to this kill. There's like the decapitation, there's parts showing the, the headless body, there's parts showing the head that's placed in a location, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, there's a few elements to this, and it's, it's really interesting and really well done. Um, definitely the highlight of the film. Yeah, so that, that's really good. Now, the, like I said, the killer in this film, um, the, there's no mystery, there's no big reveal, you know, anything like that. Like, like, so it doesn't follow the, the, the typical slasher formula in that regard. But still, the killer is really good. He's, um, he's very aggressive, and he's, he's, like I said, he, he has a sleaziness to him. And it just, I don't know, it just, it really captures the feel of a serial killer, you know? Like, you seem like you're, it just seems really realistic, um, which kind of adds to the scariness of it, you know? Like, sometimes you see, like, a killer, and they're over the top with, like, the mask and just whatever their motives are. This guy is just, he, he, he's a rapist and a killer. He just wants to, 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 to hunt down women, uh, rape and kill them. And that's, that's real. That's, that, that, that happens. That's realistic. And it happened back in the 80s. And it's just, that, it just, it feels like you're watching it. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it, it's really good in that regard. It's, it's really, there's some real sleaze to it. Um, yeah, so like I said, so even though I, I wish there were, I wish there were more kills in this film, and I feel that, you know, Savini was probably underutilized here. Um, I, you know, I, obviously we want more, you know, four, four kills just isn't enough for my liking, but, um, I was still I was still satisfied with the the quality of the kills we got. So you know, so I, I can't really complain. You know, you know, five, six, seven, eight kills would have been even better. But um, it, it may not have fit the 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 theme of the film. You know, it, it's a slow build, really tense. You know, if you're throwing in all these extra kills, it may kind of um pull back on some of the tension. So it's. Uh, I, I, I guess I like it the way it is. I just, you know, obviously we, we want more. So, so yeah, not a lot of kills, but what we get is really good. All right, let's, uh, let's move on and uh, talk about the nudity. All right, so there are um, a total of six nude scenes in this film. Um... And you know that that that's a lot. You you think, oh wow, six nude scenes. That that's a lot. But it's it's really not in this film. All of these scenes were very brief in length. Like they're mostly just like quick quick cuts where you see some nudity flashing on the screen. Um. So like, there's nothing. You know, again, like the the typical eighty slasher formula, where you have the over the top gratuitous nudity where the camera just pans just a little too long on, on these women. For no other reason, just just because they're naked, kind of thing. Just like you know, the definition of gratuitous, basically. We um, this doesn't follow that formula. Um, the yeah, they're just really quick shots. Like a lot of these scenes involve like like strip clubs. Um, and then there, there's a brief shower scene. Um, you know, we see some like nude bodies, like dead nude dead bodies. Um, it just, and all of it happens quickly while the killer is like attacking his victims, some of them. So it's just like a quick, a quick thing just to add mix in, in, into the, into the film. What it does, it, it makes, a lot of these scenes are just sleazy by nature because, um, you know, they're mixing the, the sex and the violence together. You know, again, it, it kind of goes back to that realistic, like, you know, if, if a killer was attacking a woman... Yeah, they're as they're attacking, they're ripping their clothes off and stuff, and you're like you know, it's not like these long gratuitous shots. It's just it it just kind of adds more to the realism and the sleaziness to it. Um, it it's kind of similar to um, it has the same feel as as like Maniac and the New York Ripper, just kind of like how they blend the 
the sex and violence together to just have like a sleazy feel. Um, yeah, that, that's what I got from, from, from not all the scenes, but some of the scenes in this film. Um, so yeah, so I would say for this film, the nudity, um, it, it wasn't used as like a, like a titillation tool that most of these, you know, 80 slashers is it, but it was, it was used to kind of elevate the, the tension and the terror and to kind of up, up the, the sleaze factor levels. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what you can expect in this film, um, in terms of nudity. All right, enough about that. Let's, uh... Let's move on and talk about the Blu-ray itself. All right, so, um, yeah, of course, this Blu-ray was put out by, um, by Scream Factory there. Let's see that or not. Um, yeah, and this is a, um, you know, I feel like this is, this is a decent job. The, in terms of audio video, um, you know, some of the, it's fine. It, it looks great. It's obviously it's the best it's ever looked and sounded. Um, you know, some of the outdoor shots, you know, in the bright Miami sunlight, um, there, there, there was a lot of grain, like visible grain. I, I don't mind grain in my films at all. Um, you know, they're just, but they're, they're, they're for, panned out and a lot of sunlight, a lot of white. It's just, you see a lot of the grain popping up, which is fine. That's to be expected. Um, but like I said, most of the film, you know, is indoors at nighttime, so it, it looks pretty sharp. Um, I, you know, in terms of the, the, the video quality, it looks really good. Um, same thing with the audio. Crisp, clear. Um, yeah, no complaints with that. Like, you know, Screen Factory always does a good job with their remastering of these type of, types of films. Um, so that's really good. Um, in terms of um, special features... Pretty standard stuff, you know. You got the, an audio commentary um, with Justin Kurzweil, who is one of the um, Hysteria Continues um, podcasters. Hysteria Lives. One's a website, one's a podcast. I can't remember. And he actually wrote a book that I actually have, the Slasher Teenage Wasteland book. So that's cool. Audio interviews with the composer and actor. Um, turning the tables, an interview with the director, uh, Sunshine State Stalker, an interview with, uh, John DeSanti, who plays the killer, which is cool. And this one here, Master Slashers, is an interview with, um, Tom Savini and another guy who worked on the film, Dean Gates. This is really good because it's, it's about, oh, I think it's about 17, 16, 17 minutes. And it's Savini talking about his work on this film, and like you get to see some behind the scenes sketches and stuff on the the, the practical effects it is. So, which is really good for me because I just love seeing um, you know some behind the scenes stuff. So that that's my favorite of all these special features. Um, really good. So yeah, in terms, like you know, pretty basic special features, but there's some definitely some good extra information on here. When I, when I when I unbox this, I talked about it, but I'll say this is I, I'm not super happy with the um, the packaging from Screen Factory. We you see we got the eco case here, which makes it really flimsy. Uh, I was disappointed with that. You know, no reversible cover art, which you know not a big deal, but it's nice to have the option. No slip cover, again, nice to have the option. Um, it's just they really bare bones release in terms of packaging which is too bad i i really hate these eco cases just because they're like they're just so they're so flimsy you know when you put on your shelf if you have a bunch of things and it's tight because some of mine are, are tight i'm try, trying to save space i have a lot of films on my shelves you know they they, they, they push in and you, you could like tear the paper in the sleeve um you know i i expect i expect a higher quality case from screen factory so that's disappointing but other than that, you know, like this is this is, uh, you. I'm paying for the you know the HD remaster of this film, and they in that regard, it's it's good. It's it's well worth the money. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend picking this up. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's it for the Blu-ray. Let's just uh, move on and talk about some um, some final thoughts. All right, so yeah, Eyes of a Stranger. Like I said, not your. This is not your typical '80s slasher. Um, it doesn't follow the formula at all, um, you know. And it makes sense that this this script was 
was written before Friday the 13th had, you know, even hit theaters. Um, so, you know, it, it didn't, it's not one of the films that got caught up in the, in the whole craze, you know, that was starting to emulate and duplicate, you know, Friday the, the 13th and try to, to piggyback off that success. This, this was in production, written, all that stuff before, you know, um, but in a way they did piggyback off it because they, you know, they, they grabbed Savini from that film and, you know, incorporated some of those elements into it. Um, and, 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 and it, it worked that they, they stand out. The kills are great. Um, so that's really cool. Like I said, it, it's a good, it's a good hybrid of a thriller, um, slasher, and a sleazy film. Um, and it, like I said, it creates like a really unique horror film. The setting was um, nothing unique or or memorable, but it, it found a way to really um, add some extra tension to the film. Um, so I really like the way it was filmed in the locations, just just the way it was shot, which is really good. Um, you know, despite, um, despite having quite a bit of nudity, um, it, 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 like I said, it, it's not used as, you know, a form of like titillation or like, you know, gratuitous nudity. It's, it's more added to the sleaze factor, which again, for this genre is different, unique. And of course the kills are just, um, they're fantastic. Not too many of them, but really good quality. And, you know, it, like most 80s slashers, they usually always have the one um, one highlight kill. And this one had, like I said, it, in, in the form of a decapitation, which is which is really good. Uh, so yeah, so overall, I liked Eyes of a Stranger. I really liked it. I thought it was a really enjoyable film. Really well made. Um, pretty unique. Not I can't think of too many films like it. And um, if you haven't seen this, I, I definitely recommend it. Go check it out. Just for... You know, if you're just a horror film fan, or if you're a slasher film fan, if you like that sleazy exploitation type feel, like this, there's a little bit of something for everyone, for everyone in the whole horror genre in this film. So, um, yeah, I really liked it. It's definitely good. You should definitely check it out. All right, guys, so that's it. That's, uh, that's my thoughts and review on 1981's Eyes of a Stranger. Um, if you, um, haven't seen it yet and you want to go back, um, to my 1981 year in slashers video, uh, I'll link below, but I'll also put a link on the, on the screen here. Um, you know, this gets talked about a little bit in that video. And if you like this review and you want to see, uh, some more of my other, um, 80 slasher reviews, I'll put a link up on the screen here with my playlist for all my, all my reviews. All right, guys. So that's it. So, uh, yeah. Until next time. All right. See ya.